A new series for Saturday mornings. Steve Punt turns private investigator, entering a world of intrigue and suspicion. This week, a very strange discovery on the South Coast. It's a case for Punt, P.I. <laughs> Like most people, I love a good mystery. Maybe it was a misspent childhood watching too much Scooby-Doo, but a small part of me has always wanted to investigate things that need investigating. But where do you find those things? A good case is hard to find. Whatever the famous five try and tell you. Then... Hello, Punk P.I. A fake telephone rang, yes. and I learned about a very real little story. It was down in Bridport in Dorset, nice part of the world, but this wasn't about scenery. This was so intriguing I had to pull on my raincoat, pack my trusty notepad and revolver. Okay, just the notepad. Yes, I'll, I'll be down there as soon as I can. And take the case. A discovery had been made under the floorboards of an ordinary suburban home. Discoveries made under floorboards are seldom good, whether it's dry rot, a dead body, dog eared copies of Playboy or just mice. But this wasn't any of those things. This was something much, much weirder. I needed to act, and fast, before the leads dried up and witnesses went to ground. And so I found myself in a cul-de-sac on the outskirts of Bridport to meet homeowners Mike and Terry Sutton. They wanted to show me the scene of their strange discovery. Yeah. And when we come through the ensuite into the bathroom or the jacuzzi bath, then there's, there's where the little hatches are. But you wouldn't uh-huh. see it normally because, uh, as I say, it was completely covered with the floorboards and the carpet tiles. Oh, so we, yeah. didn't, we didn't even know it was there. Can we go down there? Yeah. Oh, you see. Look at this. This is like the greatest escape. Oops, sorry. Oops. So if I hand the torch down to you, once you're in, I don't shine it in your eyes because it's very bright this one. The plumbers came to do some work. That was how it all started. Mm. I don't think I had any notion that there was a place with floorboards taken away that you could get down to anywhere. I didn't know, but they had been here before and therefore they were accustomed to it. I actually wasn't here. I was out at the time. uh, They both went down there to put the new pipes in that they knew needed replacing. Then they were deciding where they were going to put the new pipes to get everything all tickety-boo. But things were far from tickety-boo. The space under the Sutton's house was concealing a rather well-kept secret. They worked for about half an hour, I suppose. And uh, that's when they made the discovery. There's about four or five foot of standing space down there, so we crawled around all the way around under the floors, came to this one alcove, and we thought, blimey, there's a body here. Then you got closer to it, and then there was about 100 bodies there. We thought we'd come to some war zone. A war zone in Dorset? Not quite. Those weren't bodies that Plumber Phil had discovered but legs, artificial legs, and rather a lot of them. I said to Mrs Sutton, I said, uh, I think I've got, uh, got something down there you'd like to see. I thought when Phil first mentioned it that he was just joking. I didn't really take him seriously, so that was when he brought one up. I've got over 100 of these down here. Very much surprised, wasn't you? I didn't know what to say. I, I mean, the whole thing seemed so bizarre that I just... I can't sort of um, rationalise it. It's still, even now, I think, it's such a weird thing to find, isn't it? Prosthetic limbs. It was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. At this stage, we thought it was the 100, but, of course, it was a lot more than that. So how many was it in there? Give or take a few, either side of 400, and that was what it was all about. Mostly legs? All legs except um, for one hand. They were all so different from each other as well, once I actually saw them. Long ones, short ones, some with socks on, some with stockings on. Very strange thing to find. It's amazing, really. You know the previous 
owner of the house. Yeah. Never met yeah. him, never met him. We don't know him, do we? He had a local little business, you know, he used to sell a retail fish. But, I mean, we don't know where, he, how he acquired them, why he acquired so many, and uh, we really do not know the answer to that. What he had in mind, we, we should probably never know. Now that sounded like a challenge. We would probably never know how and why a fishmonger from Bridport would amass 400 false legs and put them in his cellar. I needed to try to track down the previous owner of the house, but he was in Portugal and that would take a while. In the meantime, I needed to get some leads. The Suttons had heard from various contacts, which got me thinking. We had a man who phoned us from Texas and said he had bought uh, one of these arms, a prosthetic arm, and he paid $3.50 for it. And when he actually sold it, he got, was it 350 or something like that, some enormous amount. And he said, if you've got 100 of these things, why don't you try and do it through eBay? And I said, I don't think we'll live long enough, you know, to do this lot. We had one letter in London which was just to the guy with the legs in Bridport or something like this. Of course, the local postman, yeah, it's only a little town. I mean, they knew who I was. And, I mean, he actually said that he was having problems getting um, legs through the National Health Service and he'd be prepared to pay £100 for a couple of legs. But we thought, no way we're going down that road. That's, yeah, that's yeah. too dodgy. Dodgy indeed. It hadn't initially occurred to me that the legs might be worth anything, but tales of NHS shortages and eBay profits made me wonder whether there was some sort of black market in these things. Maybe the cops would have an idea. I needed to find out if the police had any reports of missing legs. Oh, hi, is, that's Hampshire Police. Um, hi, my name's Steve. Oh, um, um, hi, uh, my name is... Uh, do you know of any uh, instances in which... Do you have uh, any knowledge or any records of any... Um, theft uh, involving P-U-N-T. Uh, I think they're almost all legs. Um, there's also... Uh, several hundred. Oh, nine, nine, nine. Oh, isn't that brilliant? Oh, nine, nine, nine. Specifically oh, legs, actually, have, have, um, have gone missing. No, OK, I won't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Now, she said that there's been a particular trend of metal thefts. I was on to something. Maybe the legs had been procured for their scrap value. Medical equipment would surely use high-grade metals, especially aluminium, apparently, and a haul of that many prosthetics was bound to be worth a bob or two. I needed to speak to a scrap metal dealer. Down on Battersea Park Road in South London, I made contact with Mick Coulton. I know this sounds a bit odd, but they're legs. Um... So basically they're sort of about three and a half foot long tubes that are made of solid aluminium. Probably about £100, pounds, I would think. £100. Quid. A scrap, without being cleaned. If you took the hinges and all the leather and the, and the foam and all the rest of it that would be on those things, yeah, uh, you'd probably double your money then. I mean, I wouldn't be interested in buying them in that state even. Too much work and labour involved in reclaiming the scrap. It's not a hugely profitable... No. You ain't going to get rich really? quick, that's no. for sure. My first lead had dried up, which served me right for basing it on pure guesswork. I needed more facts, which meant examining the evidence. But I would have to wait a few days before I could see the stash of legs, which had been taken to Luton for storage. And In the meantime, no more amateur stabs in the dark okay, about scrap expert. metal. I needed some expert uh, advice. Physics experts create acrylic replica of I. Wow. That is fascinating, but that's not it. Ah, ah here we go. Clinical I'd found just the man, Robin RSL Cooper, RSL who's been in the prosthetics business for 42 years. Surely he could give me a lead. I wondered if the Bridport discovery was as much of a surprise to him as it was to me. It's unusual because of the numbers. Uh, it's unusual because of the location. It's a huge number, um just to have in the basement or under the floorboards of a house. So that is strange. Can I just ask, uh, roughly how many people in Britain have a prosthesis of some sort? Uh, around uh, 70,000. Do you have any idea where, where these might have come from or how they might have got there? Um, I would have thought that they must have come from either some sort of manufacturing activity or perhaps something left over from the war, a conflict. Um, that's a possibility, I think. Left over from, from the World War Two. 
could be either World War I or World War II. This was better. It seemed we might have stumbled on a piece of history. The idea that the limbs might have come from veterans of the Great War or the D-Day landings seemed well worthy of investigation, and geographically, it made sort of sense. I needed to know a little more. We made contact with Dr Julie Anderson, historian of disability at the University of Manchester. It is possible that there is some wartime connection because you have so many men coming back who have amputations. 42,000 just in Britain alone from the First World War. And they get amputations to protect them from gangrene because, of course, there are no antibiotics. It becomes an enormous kind of business. It used to be a cottage industry in Britain. And Roehampton Hospital, which is just outside London, opens. And what happened was there was a tiny little workshop underneath the hospital. And it becomes enormous and it becomes the centre of limb fitting. A lot of work, actually, interestingly, was done by post. About 13,000 limbs in 1945 which must have been very bizarre because you would have received, say, a pair of legs in the post. So maybe it's just possible that a few of those limbs got lost in the post and somehow wound up under the floorboards of a bungalow in Dorset. Hopefully the mystery might begin to clear a little as the time had arrived to take a look at the legs for myself. Dr Mohamed Nasir had kindly taken charge of the legs while they awaited a new home. There isn't really any designated storage for unclaimed prosthetic limbs, so he was keeping them in a stable at the end of his garden. What we have got here. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> that is extraordinary. Um, goodness me. Well, uh, this is the size of a, of, a, of a garage. I mean, you could get a a large car in here and the room is two-thirds full of legs um, it's really strange creepy sight you can't put them into a context because they're so en masse that, that they that it's difficult to adjust to what they actually are they are that that sort of flesh tone yeah. natural the, natural brown yeah yeah, you know, sort of I mean, they are the colour of, of an action man or a, a, a Barbie. Do any of them have any sort of writing on them or anything that might help us? Uh, let me just pull this across and see whether we can find some writing on some of them. God knows what sort of motive that person had, whosoever was collecting it, uh, for that long and <clears throat> what he wanted to do with them. Oh, wow. Look at that. Anger. Ro oh, Roehampton. Roehampton Lane. Roehampton Lane, London. Interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll take some photographs and uh, that we can show Robin. That's interesting. That might be useful. There's a uh, label on the side. Is it? There. Right. This has got a plaque as well. And this again... No, no. Oh, that's a, Hanger as well. It's Hanger as well. But it looks a lot older. At this point, what had seemed a superficially light-hearted sort of a mystery took on a more sombre undertone. Every one of the hundreds of legs represented somebody's story, and the slight intrusiveness I felt at examining their ex-limbs with their flesh-toned paint and well-used straps and harnesses made me determined to try and get to the bottom of it all. Dimensions of Roehampton had me optimistic that the wartime link was a strong one. I'd taken some photos and was due to send them off to expert Robin Cooper in the hope that he might be able to confirm it. In the meantime, I was left struggling for leads. Search news. Prosthetic news. Uh, Thought-powered bionic arm is a touch of genius. 26 miles on prosthetic legs. Barder's false leg up for sale. Uh, ah. Ah, now these are interesting. Uh, 